Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaming here, and in this video, I want to talk to you about something that I've be recently been getting asked quite often, especially because it's tending to like Honkai Star Rail anniversary, right? One year in. Many, many experienced players, but this video is also meant for newer players. If you want to know, actually, is it better to build for roster depth, like more characters in, the, in your roster, or is it actually better, for example, going get their signature light cone for certain characters, going to get like eidolons of certain characters? I'm going to be talking about a lot of things in this video as well as some regrets. Learn from my mistake also. Guys, don't waste your resources. I'll share with you in a little bit as well. Now, first things first. Everyone knows that buying like new fancy characters is always very fun. You get many, many new characters to play around with. You have like, it's basically like getting a DLC. So if you care about like playing more characters, then yes, I won't stop you. I won't even like dissuade you. I think it's a pretty good idea. Not everyone cares about MOC 12 and getting the most biggest damage and fastest clears. But for those of you who want a long-term efficiency, there is a better way of playing the game instead of like being like a tart and pulling at all of these like me on my account. I just do it because I'm a content creator. It helps out making more videos for more people as well. The first thing, why is pulling more characters bad? The honest reason is, if you notice here, Memory of Chaos 12, we have eight slots here, same for Pure Fiction, which theoretically means that the honest truth is every single character here that is not selected is an Eidolon that could have been sorted in to either help you reach the Memory of Chaos 12 faster or do more DPS. This only matters, of course, if you are maybe clearing like one star, two stars. If you are three starring everything, then technically it's just helping you clear it even faster, auto battle and stuff like that. But generally speaking, if let's say you are two stars, one stars, and you have like this kind of, this screen here, many, many characters, but you just can't seem to clear. Uh, I highly encourage you if you're having this kind of trouble, look at some team comp videos. We talked about a lot of this in the channel. Maybe you're just like slapping all your favorite characters in one team. Uh, that's not how it works in Memory of Chaos 12. You do need a little bit of optimization. But then, of course, um, you're wasting a lot of Eidolons that could have been allocated more efficiently or even getting signature-like cones. So now I'm going to talk to you about the first thing that I think I would have done or am doing also on my account is the first thing I'll think about is looking at the DPSs that you use very often. Let's say you are a person that plays with uh, Doctor Ratio. Where is my Doctor Ratio? On every single occasion. Like he's your favorite character. You always play him. In that case, I would think that you can actually start considering getting the signature light cone for that character that you're playing. Um, I give you a case, an example is, for example, a character like Jing Liu was very, very strong for a very long time. No, not much competition because there's no other ice DPS. Getting her signature light cone makes a lot of difference, especially if you look at some like comparison videos, you see what, is, what are they compared off. This is super good value, especially if a DPS that you play. I always look to get my signature light cones on DPSs that I really like and I know that I'm playing very long. I'm not a massive whale by any means, even though I have many characters. If I show you my inventory here, I'm actually very selective in the light cones that I get because it doesn't really add too much value for content. It's just purely for my own DPS pleasure. So you can see here, even though I have many characters, uh, I don't have many signature light cones. The only the things that I pull off are four of them. The first is uh, shall be my own sword, Ting Liu's light cone, uh, Unreachable Sight, which is Blade's light cone, also a DPS that is super versatile. In the night, I pulled it right at the beginning when Zeela was first released. Uh, did give me quite a lot of value since I use her quite often and it's quite a versatile light cone as well. So one, two, three out of the five that I have are DPS light cones. Nowadays, you can argue that Kafka's light cone is more than a DPS light cone because this ability to proc erode is so versatile. You can slap it on like um, Black Swan, you can slap it off eventually like Acheron or any Nihility character and they be basically be able to proc some debuff plus DOT. Uh, I think this is very, very strong. So I pick out stuff that I really like. And the last one that I have is my only support light cone, which I picked up for Ronme. This is past self in a mirror. I'll explain to you my thought process of why am I so selective in my light cone? Why don't I just like buy every uh, single thing that I see? The first things first, why DPS characters instead of other characters is because these are the guys outputting damage. The difference between a five star signature, a limited and a five star non-limited, let me just show you. In the night here, you have the base attack here is like 582 already. If I swap here, you can see cruising the status seat immediately drops by 10% of base attack. Base attack, of course, is then multiplied by attack percentage, blah, blah, blah. On, uh, on top of that, this is massive amounts of stats. She gains so much out of this value. So the, the thing I always look out for is what is the difference between the light cone that I'm using, uh, the free to play light cone that I'm using versus the signature light cone. A character case in point that I don't really mind too much is a character like Black Swan, who has a very, very nice free to play option in its show time that I personally want to use at Superimposition 5 versus like other stuff I don't really 
I will care too much about, especially if it's not super versatile, like for example, Kafka's like Cone. Similarly, like if I didn't care about the versatility of this one, I could have easily like swapped out into something else. But for now, I'm just going to, to use this since I already pulled it. So DPS characters are one. Um, that's why I have it for like Ting Liu, Blade, Zealer, which I basically use on every single occasion. I always play these particular units. Then comes the next question is why did I not pull for Ho Ho's like Cone, uh, Luotas like Cone, even Fu Chen's like Cone, Silver Wolf like Cone. These are all like top tier support characters, but I chose Ron Mei out of all of them. When I think about a character when I'm pulling the like Cone is how important is this like Cone for them to work? This is super important for Ranmei because she needs to hit break effect thresholds. She also is a buffer that buffs many, many different teams. And this also gives skill point. This entire thing is basically a character on its own. I talked about it in the video already. And it's just so, so versatile character that is placed on Ranmei. She can be played into basically every single roster that you can think of. Uh, that is why she will never be like left on the bench, which means you will never have the situation where you're wasting resources unless you're playing very specialized teams that require maybe a more specialized support character. Uh, in that case, it might be a little di di different. So that is why I chose Rami out of all of them because the, uh, the free-to-play options for her light cones just pale in comparison and it's very, very situational that she needs a certain like stat and stuff like that. Then the next thing is, when do you actually go for Eidolons out of all of them instead of like, yeah, I'll just get a signature, I'll just stop. I think characters that are getting Eidolons and for most of you who are watching up to this point, you realize that it's all about the odds of you benching that character. For example, E6 Zealer now is like probably going to be benched by a lot of people most of the time because it's not a, a Zealer meta. To go all the way to E6, I would actually say it's a huge waste of money. You never want to go push all the way to E6 unless you are like a Giga Whale. Most of the time, I would say one or two is more than enough. One or two will help you like get the character into a very, very end game state. I'll give you an example. It's like a character like Kafka, who most people play like nowadays. If you put her to, for example, E1, you have increased DOT. Put at E2, you increase more DOT of the whole team. So this is already good enough. E6 doesn't really add much considering that, um, that the low value that 3 and 5 generally gives. You're kind of like wasting a full character for 3 and 5. I don't really like that. So unless E6 is like God tier, which so far I haven't seen any, uh, E2 actually is probably the most optimal for most, most characters in Honkai Star Rail. And that is my like max recommendation for most people, even myself. So one of the big regrets for me, Never go for E6. I don't think it's ever worth it. This picture, you can just crop it off on the internet. You can get it if you like looking at it. Never worth it. What do I actually then spend my own money on for Eidolons? I think it's definitely uh, a character that is super ultra versatile. I pick Ranmei because uh, she does a lot more. You have defense ignore. You have basically increasing attack by massive amounts when their enemies are dealing weakness break and stuff like that. Super versatile character can be fit into every single team. You add in more Eidolons means you just encourage, you just increase the value of this character so much. Rather than having characters, let's say I'm not even playing with, let's say, Argenti, Ting Yuan, I don't play with Silver Wolf. All these could have been like put into better characters for better use that I use on a more regular basis as well. So that is one aspect. The next aspect is a character that I actually don't use, which is Silver Wolf. I look for Eidolons that give tons of value that changes the way the character is built or changes the way the character is played. Silver Wolf is one of those characters because this energy re regen that she gets is very huge, uh, can be triggered up to five times in each use of ultimate. This is a huge amount of energy refund for a character that is centered mostly around her ultimate in order to do that massive defense breaking. Of course, like some skill here and there. More energy means that she becomes more skill point positive also, doesn't have to use so much skills to get the energy threshold. Uh, with that huge refund that she has. So that is why like, I get certain things for certain characters. And the one that I, other character that I actually got E1 or Eidolons for is Luota. Because I use him on a very regular basis back then, since version 1.1, 1.2, all the way till now. So it's almost a year already. And this Eidolon definitely gave me a lot of benefit because of the 20% attack bonus that goes to the entire uh, team. I don't think it's as necessary now, but then before that, I was on a high when Honkai Star Rail first came out, spending a lot more resources and money than I should. But those are my thoughts on why I think allocation is very, very important. Uh, in general, I don't think that light cones are very crucial. Even characters, for example, like Black Swan, like Kafka, might even do without their light cone and you can get a lot of value. Characters that probably need their light cone will be characters like Baibetilune, uh, characters like Jingliu, characters like Blade definitely do appreciate. 
DPS characters in general do want their signature a little bit more than support characters, but there are exceptions to the rule, as I mentioned why I did for Run Maze, uh, like Cone out of all of them. And if you appreciate such content, I'm actually going to be doing another video where I talk about the most critical Eidolons for every single character in the game. If you want to see that, click on this video, it'll be up on the channel real quick and soon. Otherwise, uh, do stay tuned to the channel, like and subscribe for more such future videos and see you in the next one.